Welcome to Cute Widgets and More. In today's episode, we will see the steps required for compiling Qt itself. Why would you compile Qt yourself? Well, whenever you debug your way into Qt, if you haven't watched the episode yet of the model index checker, there's a link below, then you should go and, and check that video. There, I will be debugging my way into Qt to verify why did the model index checker complain about uh, codes in my models. And there it's super annoying when it's standing and showing me I was calling onto your model, but it was the wrong line I was standing there pointing to. And why is that? Well, the reason is that the Qt that comes with your SDK is compiled with optimization, which means that line order might not be entirely correct anymore. So if you compile Qt yourself, you have the benefit that it actually, whenever you debug your way into Qt, that it will look correct. So first thing to do to compile Qt yourself is to get your hands on the source. If you're on the commercial version, I'm sure there is a source package that you can download there. If you're on the uh, open source version, just clone it from Git. You have two options. First of all, if you want to compile Qt 6, you need a clone line that looks like this. Yes, I know it says Qt 5.git, but there's also Qt 6 in there. If you are on Qt 5.15, you better get the version that comes with key or that, that KD hosts, which is the 5.15 from, from Qt, but with some important bug fixes in there. And there, the line, the clone line looks like this. Next, you cloned out and you got this Qt5 uh, subdirectory, so CD in there, and now you need to switch either to Qt6, get switch 5, well, 6.3, which is the current version of this recording, or get switch 5, KD slash 5.15 if you are on the KD 5.15 version. Next, once you've done this, you have the, the source code of either 5.15 or 6.3, and you want to run a Perl script that's called init repository. It looks like this. It's the same for both of these. Uh, it has one option that's very useful, namely minus minus module, module subset that tells you which subdirectories to actually compile. Just do an ls to see which one is in there. And in case that your, your uh, compilation complains, hey, I didn't find this or that, then just add it to the list. Otherwise, you will compile everything, including QML, including Qt3D, lots of stuff that you will likely not use. So this line here simply just says, uh, I want Qt Base, Qt Tools, Qt LX, Qt X11 Extra, which doesn't, by the way, exist in Qt6, so that you wouldn't want that there. Qt SVG, Qt XML patterns, which is all those things that I needed for my own work. Now you have configured your source code, CD up mega directory for your Qt5 build, CD into that one. And now you want to run a, a compile or configure line that looks like this. So configure minus developer build, telling that you want it to be set up with debug symbols and stuff like that. Minus open source, telling you want to use the open source license. Of course, if you're using a commercial one, you're not going to do that. Minus no make examples and minus no make test, telling do not compile examples and test. It'll just take extra time to do so. And finally, if you're on Qt5, run make. If you're on Qt6, run cmake minus minus build dot, and it looks like this. And that's it. Now you got a Qt version compiled and you can debug your way in and it'll be the right file name, well, that usually is, but also the right line numbers. So once you compile your own Qt, to use it from within Qt Creator, you need to go Tools, Options, Kits, and in here in the Kits, you need to add the Qt version. So you can see I already have a bunch in here, including my own version of Qt. But what you do is that you say Add, you will browse your way for wherever your, your Qt is. So I'm almost there, Qt 5 built, and uh, I need to find my QMeg in here. Uh, it is in Qt base, bin, QMake. Having found that one, it will know how to fetch all the information from it. The Qt version already registered with 
own build queue. Okay, that's uh, that's unfortunate. But anyway, that would be the one that I had there. And then I will next go to my kit section. And again, I'm sure I'm getting in trouble here. I will specify uh, cute which and more cute. And uh, that's a name that I can see in my compilation setup or in my kit selection whenever I want to compile that. I can specify a bunch of different things. We talked about specifying a, a C cache, compiler cache for my C and C++ compilers and so on. Um, and of course, the final one is that I need to specify the Qt version. So that would be my own build Qt that we had there. Once I've specified all of these things, I will say okay to that. And now in my project settings over here, you can see you have a bunch of different ones and Q widgets and more Qt double clicking on that, choosing build. And now it will actually build for that one. I'm building whatever I recorded just before this session here. And you can see in my uh, my run settings here, I now have the Q widgets and more here. And I also have a own build Qt. That was a previous one, but now I'm using the Qt widgets and more. And I can specify different options for that. So this was on my Linux system. But remembering from past lives doing the same thing on Windows, um, and I assume same thing on Mac, I've never been on Mac. It is not super rocket science to compile Qt yourself. Of course, you need to get all the dependencies right, uh, get the submodules that you actually need, but it's definitely worthwhile the effort because when you start debugging your way into Qt and it tells you the wrong line numbers, just super annoying. Below, there is a link uh, to the Viggy page inside of Qt.io that tells you all the steps for compiling Qt. Just remember if you want to compile uh, Qt 5.15 instead of the, the clone line for, for from Qt.io, go with the KD1, which has some bug fixes and some feature, well, not feature, but, but some security fixes in addition to it. That's it. You've been watching yet another episode of Qt Widget and more. I'm Jesper Peterson from KDAP. And until next time, have a great time.